over the past day, the armed forces repelled enemy attacks near six settlements. This information was published on Facebook by the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, Ukraine Forum reports. The enemy continues to focus its efforts on attempts to fully occupy the Donetsk region, organize defense and hold the captured territories, as well as disrupt the active actions of the defense forces in certain areas. The enemy continues to shell the houses of civilians and objects of civilian infrastructure, violating the norms of international humanitarian law, the laws and customs of war. Over the past day, the Russian occupiers launched six missile and 28 airstrikes, carried out more than 90 rounds of anti-aircraft fire at military and civilian objects on the territory of Ukraine. In other directions, the enemy fired from tanks, mortars and artillery of various types. In the temporarily captured territory of the Kherson region, the occupiers continue illegal actions against the civilian population. In the area of the settlement of Chongar, servicemen of the occupying forces, under threats of death, force the local population to participate in the fortification equipment of the positions. According to detailed information, during the retreat of the occupiers from the Larkiv region, units of the 11th Army Corps from the Baltic Fleet of the Armed Forces of the Russian Federation lost more than 50% of their personnel and more than 200 units of military equipment. The equipment of the brigade is handed over to units of the Border Service of the FSB of the Russian Federation, and the military unit is being prepared for disbandment. The occupiers suffered significant losses when they attempted to storm the defense forces in the Avdiiv direction. According to the available information, more than 30 people from the 1st Army Corps of the Russian troops are admitted to the medical facilities every day. The occupying power is trying every way to restore the fighting capacity of units that have suffered losses. During the day, Ukrainian aviation struck 13 areas of concentration of enemy manpower and equipment and three positions of anti-aircraft missile systems. Rocket troops and artillery inflicted fire damage on more than 200 enemy objects. Among them are 12 control points, warehouses of ammunition and fuel and lubricants, artillery positions and areas of concentration of personnel and military equipment. Enemy casualties are currently being verified. <laughs> Meanwhile, President Volodymyr Zelensky's advancing troops in the south are expected to encircle and choke out Russian soldiers in Kremlin-controlled Kherson. Rather than a direct strike on the city, which could deteriorate into an open street battle, the Ukrainian military is tipped to steadily isolate President Putin's troops until they are forced to retreat due to a lack of resources. <laughs> Dr. Patrick Berry, a senior lecturer in security at the University of Bath, spoke to Express.co.uk to discuss Kiev's renewed counter-offensive against Russian-occupied regions in the south of Ukraine. Speaking of the Ukrainian military strategy, Dr. Berry said, they don't want to get involved in an urban fight in Kherson. So, what you do is you isolate it, you envelop it, you basically cut it off. You do that and you will probably leave a few routes out for the Russians. If you do that, you've kind of gone around and passed the city to try and choke them out. Ahead of the large-scale counter-offensive operation, Ukrainian forces made use of Western-supplied long-range weapons to destroy key road bridges into the city. The Russian military, who had been using these roads as essential resupply routes, 
attempted to construct a pontoon bridge across the Dnipro River to compensate for the destruction. However, the UK Ministry of Defence has reported the makeshift floating bridge remains incomplete, leaving Russian troops in Kherson lacking a reliable transport route through which to receive military supplies, rations, and additional personnel.